Okay. What is the remedy for American torture? By Fonola Na Aloni, Assistant Secretary of State for Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor, Tom Malinowski skated to the UN Committee on Torture two weeks ago that a little more than 10 years ago our government was employing inter inter interrogation methods as President Obama said any fair-minded person would believe were tortured at the same time the test of any nation committed to this convention and to the rule of law is not whether it ever makes mistakes but whether and how it corrects them but what does correction looks like what obligations of repair follow from the acknowledgement that torture was routinely and consistently practiced by the United States it is a very clear is it very clear that the convention against torture article 14 as well as the collective jurist prudence of regional and international courts require that reparations follow from harm committed in branch of human rights treaty obligations at the same hearing acting legal advisor to the state department mayor mcclone claimed that the united states has taken important steps to ensure adherence to its legal obligation these include the creation and enforcement of law and procedures to strengthen the safeguards against torture and cruel treatment including executive order 13491 we are told that army field manual rules on interrogation are now being fully enforced and that there is a great transparency in interrogation procedure go with some Abag abaginti whether these procedures apply outside the territory of the united states there is one resounding silence in the contents of torture committee at guatemala bay and in other detention sites across the world not one word emerged from the delegation on what direct and specific obligation of reparation was owed to those persons who experienced torture at the hands of agents of the united states this gap was directly addressed by jeans Modvik, the country repertory who asked the delegation to clarify how many victims of torture have legal pursued and successful obtained effective remedies for torture during u.s custody within and outside u.s territory in a parallel the u.s position on prosecution maintained a curious silence on the silence of accountability for torture for torture post 9 11 though persecution and other contents against international recognized tortures and taught as evidence of a commitment to broadly based accountability in the midst of this resounding silence my comments focus on what the committee can and should expect of the united states with respect to respirations for guantanamo bay detainees and others illegal treated in black sites a starting point to address why the united states have a obligation of reparations is to recall why remedies exist for human rights violations under international treaty law reparations exist because they provide a concrete means to show a desire for non reputation to give redress to persons who have been harmed and to individuals confirm meaningful condemnation in the aftermath of grievance harm to a 
human being. Recall that the ICJ had held that the power to afford reparations is implicable in judicial to hear a case as a necessary concomitant to decide disputes. Simply put, reparations are necessary to repair the legal injury. The practice of regional human rights bodies gives us useful insight into what might be expected of the United States for violation of the CAT, the CAT. It is fairly to say that the European Courts of Human Rights, ECTHR, has historically taken a more conservation approach to the provision of remedies. The form of remedies for torture has generally followed the model of direct finance compensation to the individual who has been harmed, the payment of lawyers, fees, and the administration not to breach again. More recently, however, the court is adopting a broader approach to remedies and now proactively in, in di- indicates the measure of the measure a violent, I mean, viol- violating state should take to prevent torture recurring. So, for example, in early cases like Serene versus United Kingdom, 1989, involving breaches of the torture prohibit prohibition prohibition and a decision to extradite a German national facing the death penalty to the United States neither procurinary nor non procurinary damages was awarded to the victim however costs and expenses of $26,782.80 was sustained in later cases such as Rebatshi versus Australia, 1991, involving ill treatment in federal police authority, custom, custody, and Vena. The ECTHR specifies required that similar violations do not occur in the future. In the past two decades, a robust application of non Presumption, pre, preconcionary damages both to applicants and their families can be observed in tortured cases such as Kurt versus Turkey, 1998. Here, non-precarinary damages of fifteen thousand dollars was awarded to the applicant's son and ten thousand to the applicant in Sadmani versus France, 1999, five hundred thousand. FRF were awarded in non procurinary damages for torture in police custody. And in Taz versus Turkey, 2000, 20,000 was awarded in non procurinary damages following the enforced disappearance of the applicant's son and 10,000 in respect of the applicant for torture in the content of disappearance. Recently, in the content of Render nation cases from Poland here. The case has confirmed the Poland not only had to pay direct compensation to those rendered, but the government was required to take proactive institutional actions to protect them. The emerging scopes of a expansive, expansive remedies approach for systematic violations of non derogatable rights is treacherously illustrated by a series of cases in which the United States was founded in violation of another non-derogatable convention right, the rights to life, Article 2. Spanning among two decades, these cases included death resulting from the exercise, the exercise of force against members of parliamentary organizations. McCain versus the United States, 1995. Jordan versus the United States, 2000 and tw- 2001. McCure and others versus United Kingdom, 2001. And McCaughey and Grew 
versus United Kingdom 2013, and the court determined that a range of institutional measures had to be taken in order to provide just satisfaction to those killed in their family. These measures include positive and procedural obligations for the state and its agents that addresses planning, training, oversight, investigation, persecution, and civil remedies. The obvious precursor to these institutional remedies was individuals' compensation to those, all those whose family members were killed by the use of force violating the right of life provision to the convention. The UK preceded and specifies. Spiff, spiff, uh, the broad package of measure agreed by the Council of Europe to formally address and remedy violations of the rights to life occurring during the conflict in North Ireland provides one use to conceptualize what racial future practice post 9-11 might look like in practice. The Inter-America Court IAH has been exceedingly robust in provision of reparations with respect to the ability to order for other measures. In our book, Eat Al versus Sam Rene, 1990, where multiple violations, including violations of rights to humane treatment, was sustained, the courts ordered collective repar rep reparation for a wide range of families and village members, including individual payments to multiple families. The courts ordered the creation of two trust funds and the establishment of a foundation of the entire harassed community. Justice stipul stipulated that the financial instrument should not be subject to national taxation rules. The court ruled the state as a act of reparation to reopen the school located in the area where the harm took place with a obligation to staff its with teaching and administrative personnel.